How's it going everybody? Andrew Robinson back at it here with another Max MSP tutorial. In this video, we are going to return to some audio programming and we are going to look at a very important fundamental technique uh, and that technique is the harmonic series. If you look at this Wikipedia page right here, the harmonic series uh, is a series, is a sequence of frequencies, musical tones, or pure tones in which each frequency is an integer multiple of a fundamental. That's some uh, math talk, uh, and we can see that math talk in action over here. Um, what does this mean? How does this relate to music programming and Max MSP? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, we've messed around with sine waves before, right? That's your cycle tilde object. You put a number in here, that's a frequency. You connect that to your audio output just like that, and bam, we are hearing that frequency at that specific, uh, we're hearing that sine wave at that specific frequency. And then we can multiply the amplitude by a value to uh, increase the volume or decrease it uh, appropriately. We've talked about this already in that very first video, but it's just a simple sine wave. You have one sine wave that is that frequency. What if we wanted to build more complex sounding instrument? That is where this harmonic series uh, comes into handy. Uh, and basically, we just, like it said, we're going to take a fundamental, which is our frequency value, in this case, this uh, 220 right here, we're going to multiply it by an integer, that's just some numbers, you multiply it by 2, by 3, by 4, by 5, up and onward, and then you send all of those to be their own sine waves, and it's going to give us a much more rich and uh, interesting sounding sound. So let's do that. How do we do that? It's so simple. We're just going to take this cycle object and we're going to do exactly what we just said. We're going to take a value that's going to be our fundamental frequency and we're going to multiply by it by some integers. Uh, because we're dealing with frequencies, it's very important that we use our float number boxes. Those are the ones with the decimal point. When you type multiply by one, you got to make sure to include that decimal. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. Um, I'm going to click on this object. I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm going to drag. And then we're going to create a copy just like that. And we're going to switch the one to a two and so on times three times four. Let's highlight all of these click and drag. So we make a bunch of copies times four times five times six. Let's do uh, two more. Uh, you can really just go as high as you want. Um, but just know, you know, the higher you go, the higher frequencies there are. And at a certain point, it's either just going to be way too high, we're not going to be able to hear it, or they could be sharp. So, you know, just figure out um, what sounds good to you uh, and where a good stopping point is. Um, don't do times like 100, though. That's That would be pretty ridiculous. Okay, anyways, we're moving on. We've got our fundamental frequency. We've got our numbers, our integers that we are multiplying by, uh, our floating number integers. We're just going to patch this fundamental frequency float number box into all these multiply objects in the left inlet. So it multiplies this number by this number, and we get the result out of this outlet. And then we're going to have all of these go into their own cycle object basically so i'm just gonna i should have copied all of these along with uh making those multiply objects you know hindsight's 2020 20, it's all good we're gonna multiply connect uh the multiplication objects into the cycle objects one at a time just like this bam 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 and once those are in we're gonna send all this to our audio output um, I'm going to mute my speakers for just a sec while I do this um, until we can adjust these values appropriately. I could also set these multiplication tilde objects to be zero if I wanted the sound to be off when I started. Uh, maybe that would have been smarter to do, uh, you know, but like I just said, you know, hindsight, it's hindsight. Whatever. Anyways, uh, after we've slowly connected all of these in uh, and we have this set up to go, I'm going to turn my sound back on, and we're going to set this to be a number. Okay, so that's a pretty cool sound. Uh, real fast, so I can control the master amplitude, we're going to add this into here. This is a live gain option. Uh, slider it lets us control the gain with this little classic gain knob sound so I'm gonna set that down so we can have this go and then you know control the volume of all of these with just this one slider 
because it's now our master slider. So that's super useful. And since we've got that set up, we've got our volume down. Let's talk about what we're doing. So uh, this is the these are the overtones of of this uh, sound, and we could this is just multiplying by whole integer values exactly like this is talking about. Um, there's a lot to this. There's a lot of science behind how we perceive audio and sound. Um, so if you really want to get into it, I highly recommend actually reading all of this Wikipedia page. Um, but the other important thing to talk about uh, is that it's not just uh, whole numbers we can multiply by. Um, we can take these values, and actually if we multiply them by ratios, we're going to get different intervals. These are all essential. They're sort of octaves of this sound. Not, not totally, um, but like this, this note is 70 and this is 140 this here these first two those are definitely an octave um, and if we wanted to we could get you know the notes in between by say rather than multiplying this by two we can multiply it by three and then divide it by two and then we're gonna get you know times one half of whatever this value is you could also just multiply by 1.5 and then um, that's gonna give you you know, I, uh, it's just going to give you a different interval. I can't remember if this is the third or the fifth. It kind of sounds like a third to me, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm not really great at that stuff. Um, but that's the idea. You can then, you know, we can multiply this by like five and divide by four. And then again, that's just going to be another interval in this. this are two turn this to a three this to a four we'll leave those so now this is our instrument sound and that's pretty cool that's a lot more uh, full it's got like a very flute like essence to it um, so you know we've just kind of just with this, we've kind of built a more complex instrument because we could uh, take like the case slider object that we've talked about, get the MIDI value, uh, turn the MIDI to a frequency with the M to F object, patch that into here, and then that you know you could play this like an actual piano with this sound. That would totally be possible. Um, but the beauty of Max is that we can also get way weirder with things too, and that's just as fun. Um, so let's try something kind of out of the box with this. My idea for what we're about to do is we're going to take um, these amplitude values and we're going to assign them to just be random. So we're going to have different overtones uh, that are you know, different frequencies at different amplitude values. So we'll hear certain frequencies louder than others. Um, and I think that's going to also sound kind of strange and interesting. So I'm going to do a random 100, which is going to give us a random range of values between 0 and 99. We're going to divide by 99. So we normalize her range to be between 0 and 1 now, which is exactly what we need to multiply for this amplitude value. Uh, and then we're going to use our line object, which creates a ramp for us. And we just have to specify uh, using a list. Uh, what value to go to and how long to get there. So we'll go to our random value. That's the first value in this list and what this F stands for because it's a float number. And we're going to say get there in 500 milliseconds, which is a great place to start. So let's see. We need, we also, yeah, um, we just basically need this to trigger randomly. Uh, so... That can be done with a bang, and we'll just patch this into our amplitude value, and um, let's create some copies of all of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Patch these in. Just like this. 
And then we have, we said we have eight, right? So we're gonna do another random. We're gonna do random eight. So we'll get a random value between zero and seven. We're gonna do cell zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So any random value is gonna trigger a different random one of these. And we're just gonna patch each of these outlets now into each of these randoms. So this is kind of like our master random uh, that is going to randomly change the amplitude to a random value, um, which is perfect. And basically, we let's just set this to like a metro timer for now. And since our uh, line ramp is 500 milliseconds, we should do the same with our metro. And now when I turn the volume up, We can see this is working because these are in fact changing. And we can change our fundamental frequency if we want. Yeah, so that's very soothing. <laughs> um, and that's pretty much it. I'm going to leave the video right here. Um, so I hope this was useful for you. Um, I hope you guys learned something you didn't know before, whether you know it had to do with the overtones, harmonic series, the fact that we can create uh, musical intervals using ratios and just by multiplying values. Um, there's, there's a lot in this, especially if you are new. So uh, if you enjoyed and you learned a lot, please remember to like and subscribe. That's kind of how I know that I'm doing a good job with this, and I really appreciate it so much when you guys do that. Um, and if there's any lingering questions about anything, you know, please leave those in the comments down below. Uh, I will answer them when I can. Uh, and with that... Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.